Hey, this video is a follow-up to the previous one about particles. We've made a simple particle system with GLSL, remember? Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about ways of improving it and the first thing that came to my mind was making a custom emitter because we've only been shooting particles from the world origin and I want to be able to use it with any sub geometry. I'm gonna start from where we've left, so if you've missed the previous video, go, go watch it first, it's right there. So, let's add a simple torus for starters. A pretty obvious thing to do is to convert it into a chop, then convert it into a top, select the RGB thing and fit to square, and we get new initial positions for our particle sim. We can just replace our old initial positions with new ones, and it sort of works already, except it doesn't, and if you reset the feedback you'll get an error message. That's because our chop to top here is 29 by 29 pixels and other instance operators are all 100 by 100. And while you can easily change it by hand, reset, and it will work, if you change the geometry again, it will break again. So let's instead add a constant chop, rename it to size px. I'm gonna use a simple Python expression for the value, just get the width of the chop to one operator. Yeah, there you have it. Now we can copy and paste it as a reference to the ramp, initial velocity and force. Yeah, we can get rid of the pose in it, because we don't really need it anymore. So, now you can change your mesh, reset the feedback and it will work just fine. But if you change your camera position and give it another look, you'll see that there are points at the world origin that aren't really there on the mesh. That's because we have these pixels left that are completely black, and black means 0, 0, 0. So what we could do is to go to our chop to top and change it to RGBA, because all we need is an alpha channel, right? But it won't work, because we only provide three channels of data. Yeah, it's an easy fix. Uh, add a chop null, drag it onto the chop to top operator, move these to the left, Insert a pattern chop here, change the type to constant, insert a merge chop and connect the pattern chop. And now change the chop to top to RGBA again, see we've got the alpha channel. Another thing that I would like to do is to use our mesh point normals as force vectors for each particle. Because now they just fly random directions driven by the noise top. So select these operators and duplicate them. Go to the second sub to chop, disable positions and enable normals. Insert a top null in here, connect the chop to top and insert a math top so that we could control the amplitude of the force. Yeah, it works. If you want, you can still put it through a noise top to randomize it. It's a nice setup, it's pretty simple but there's one problem. If you look right here, there is a vivid structure, which is not how I want it to be. And also, I want to be able to change the number of particles without messing up the geometry. Would be cool to scatter some points on the surface, and I bet you've guessed it, we can use a sprinkle soap that does exactly that. So let's plug it into a null and drag this null to our sub to chop operators. And now there is another problem. These newly created points, they don't have any normals. So what we could do is spend another hour making a simple tool that takes our initial points with their normals and new scattered points. Then for every scattered point, it finds its closest neighbors, checks their normals and blends between their values to estimate the new normal. Then spend another hour or so debugging it and a couple of days thinking about how to make this into a clear YouTube tutorial. So maybe, just maybe, we could go and Google that first and find an incredible user named AJK48 and who's done that already and even shared the docs component. So download the docs component, the link is in the description. Thank you AJK48 and drag the docs file into touch designer I always get confused by these inputs, so let's properly name them. Go inside the comp, call this one to, call the other one from. That's better. So, we need to transfer normals from these points to these points. Change the attribute from CD to M. And another error. I'm getting used to that. 
That's because our Sprinkle points don't have channels to store the normal attribute. You can fix it by adding an attribute create sub and checking compute normals. Append it with another null and drag it to the sub to chop. We only got two parameters to control, how far we want to search for neighbors and how much we want to blend between their values. We have enough points here, so let's set these values to something really low. Now we can adjust the camera so that we could see the whole thing. And that looks like what I wanted. So one cool thing here is that you can directly control the number of particles. So if you're making a large scale network, I, I guess it's easier. And another cool thing is that no matter what mesh you plug in, the number of particles stays the same. So you don't have to reset these feedback loops. You, you can use a torus and change it to a sphere. You can even use a file insult and bring your own mesh if you want. I hope you've liked this little tutorial. If so, give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel if you're new here. You can also support me on Patreon and get access to some project files and additional tutorials. Yeah, that's that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.